everyone, and welcome back to A Cup of Coffee, the show to go with your morning cup of coffee. I'm Omer, returning with my co-host, Amat. Hey, everyone. Um, Omer and I are here today with our guest, Eamon, who we're very excited to have. Uh, Eamon, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Eamon. I'm at Eamon's Books pretty much on every piece of social media, especially like TikTok. I make bookish-related content, and I'm excited to be here with you guys. Thank you for joining us. Of course, of course. All right. So um, we usually we ask our guests um, a question about what they're a nerd about, but <laughs> I think your one's a little bit uh, self-explanatory. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I, I like to read. I read books all the time. I've been reading most of my life. And um, I guess quarantine boredom was what got me back into reading. And then I started making videos on it through TikTok and stuff like that. You know, I didn't, I wasn't in any sort of like book community before. Um, but I discovered through talk, TikTok, like book talk really through quarantine boredom, like I said. I'm like, oh, this is really cool. It's really fun. And I just joined it, made some videos. They went viral and I guess here I am. That's awesome. What's the most amount of like views or likes that you've gotten on something? Um, it's kind of funny. So do you guys know that she's like an influencer, a YouTuber, Gabby Hanna? She's kind of controversial. <laughs> I've heard of her. Yeah. You probably have heard of her. A lot of, like, most of the internet makes fun of her, like, warranted. But, um, so she has this very, very, very bad poetry book that she published, I think. Oh, that's where I've heard of her. Yeah. Yeah. About, like, five years ago, I think. And I reviewed it. Like, um, I, like, stitched her video. She's like... Um, you talk about me, you get millions of likes. And I'm like, well, let me stitch that. Because I read, I remember reading her poetry book, like, in Target, like, literally in the book aisle. And I'm like, this is really bad. Why would anybody spend, like, their money on it? And so I, I stitched that video. And I, like, so, like, um, I read al aloud her poetry. And then I, like, <laughs> gave my little comedic um, comments on it. And that has over, I think, 2.1 million likes. That's my most, like, liked video. I think it has over 10 million views. Dang. Wow. That's cool. That's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Yeah, so, maybe, we should maybe we should talk about her poetry more on the podcast. Yeah. We'll, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll Go for this it. this as a stitch to the, the, the original video. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. No, yeah. Literally. That, that sounds really cool. Um, so you just, like, discovered book talk like was there like something like the moment that you saw book talk you were just like this is like this is what I want to do uh sort of yeah I mean like I I think like what was quarantine in the United States March of 2020 that's when mm -hmm. really I discovered it like we had like a lot of time over on our hands like yeah. my campus closed down so I was at home and so I just was scrolling through TikTok and for months I was just like scrolling like anybody else um and during March of 2020 is when I discovered book talk I didn't start making videos until August of 2020 and I didn't have any like set goal in mind or like oh my gosh I need to get this many followers by the end of this year or whatever the heck it's just like yeah. me posting for fun make myself laugh make my friends laugh and then here and there videos started to pick up and get traction and I got followers and I'm like oh this is like yeah. is it that easy to go viral or something <laughs> and then I'm like you know I let's just keep is. on doing this <laughs> <laughs> no yeah it's like honestly it's like the videos that you put the least amount of effort in do well they do very well actually um, and the stuff they put the most amount of ever in don't really do well. So it's like TikTok is weird. The algorithm is weird. And it's kind of hard to um, understand it, if that makes sense. So you're telling me that the less work <laughs> I do, the better it's going to work out for me. Oh, literally. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm telling you, literally the less work, just like anything that is somewhat relatable, funny, or whatever it is, it could be like seven seconds of just nothing. And like, boom, there's like millions of likes. It's like, it's so weird because it's like, some of the videos that deserve more hype don't get as much hype as the videos that yeah. like spend the least amount of effort in and you don't really take too seriously. Yeah. It's so weird, but I guess TikTok loves that and they eat it up. I don't know, man. It's crazy. It is really cool though to see like all of the, the niche content, the fact that you could find book talk and like the fact, the stuff that comes up on my for you page is like catered towards me. And then like sometimes my friends will be like, what is your for you page? But you know, like there's, all yeah. this different like it, it's it's so it, it's done really well even though like it's kind of stupid at times the things that go viral like it kind of makes sense in a way 
exactly yeah because like your for you page is like catered to you you know what I mean it's like and I don't really know how like I got like discovered book talk I think I just liked one video and then boot my for you page was like yeah you let's just like put all the book talk videos on your for you page and because like yeah. book talk is still a pretty small community compared to the rest of like tiktok yeah, uh, so I'm like yeah and like I wasn't in any sort of book community like I read here and there but I didn't really start binge reading or even taking recommendations from other book talkers until like I like first myself into the community wow all right that's that's kind of how you ended up in my uh because I just like one of your posts and then one of your videos <laughs> and then you kept popping up and I was like mm, her content is really interesting <laughs> yeah <laughs> TikTok's it's telling you something content. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that yeah I know I also have to say this um because I was talking with one of my friends um and so we were planning on possibly recording with you. And I was like, have you heard of uh, Eamon's Aim books on TikTok? And she was like, <laughs> oh, my God, I love her. So I am obligated because of her to tell you that um, she loves you and is obsessed with you. So oh my she gosh. just asked me well, to say that. <laughs> yeah. That is so sweet and kind of her. Tell her I love her back and I appreciate all the support and love. That's amazing. I love that so much. Yeah, awesome. Thank I will make sure to tell her. <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, the algorithm also put you on her uh for you page and like she she is obsessed with books obsessed with you as well now and uh it's oh uh, i love that yeah, it's, <laughs> thank it's you, really thank it's you. a really cool community like sometimes it's uh very wholesome and it's right yeah yeah i guess um so like oh, from an outsider looking in book talk is i guess pretty small very wholesome very like oh cutesy whatever um but like when you get into it it's um it seems like bigger if that makes sense um and there's so many like different niches within book talk so it's not like everyone's just talking about the same book it's like you can find yourself on like the sci-fi side of book talk they're talking about sci-fi books mm. or like historical fiction romance uh young adult stuff like that um a lot of like creators like um keep their content towards like one or two genres i'm kind of the same way mine is more like young adult and adult and like romance and stuff like that and then yeah. occasional like fiction books and stuff like that but no yeah like it's really cool like um how you can um you know find yourself in a community that's like catered to you and your likes and stuff like that because like if you like a sci-fi tv show you might like sci-fi books or blah 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 you know what i mean yeah that's yeah. it's really awesome yeah, it's like how I ended up on Dune Talk the other day. I was, yeah, no, I tried. I tried reading Dune. I got like I sixty know, I, pages I'm in, and to read it right now, it's it. I feel like it's good, but it's it's a lot. Yeah, no, yeah, I've seen like the reviews and stuff like that. They're they're very like mixed. Most of them are like bad. If and if anybody usually they. I don't know. They stand it or they they swear by it. It's like really old men for some reason. Yeah. Um, maybe because it is like you know a really old book, <laughs> but yeah. um, yeah. I tried reading it just like for the movie to be honest. Um, and I got like sixty pages in, and it was like super confusing, and the writing yeah, wasn't that great. Very, the world building was not it's that very, good. Like, it it gets better later on, but it's it, it's a lot of exposition dumping. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't know if I want to like it's like uh, um dedicate time to this let me just go and read it's something like, more it's almost like reading an encyclopedia with a little bit of narrative yeah. description. exactly exactly like i have a friend who tried reading the graphic novel which you think would be easier but she's like no it's not it's just it's the same thing it's like oh, so much exposition and so much world building and some things just don't make sense yeah, yeah I, I enjoyed the movie though i thought it did a good job yeah i haven't seen the movie yet i do plan okay. to probably this week but or, yeah, my university was giving away tickets, so I got like how cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, you people still haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing too. I'm playing too. No, yeah, I think I might watch Eternals first before I watch Dune, though. I have more excitement for that. Dude, I yeah, need to I see Eternals around to it. Like, I'm hearing. Like I don't usually look at reviews to decide whether I want to see a movie or not. Um, I just mm. check like my friends' word of mouth, and yeah. they didn't see all all that enthusiastic about it, which is surprising because pretty much all of them love Marvel movies. So I was like, oh, yeah. okay, no, yeah, I don't really like look at reviews either. I just wait until like 
I'll see like one TikTok edit of like the character or whatever the heck. Yeah. Um, like it's, like especially like Druig, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, TikTok loves him. Like everybody, like I thought going into this movie or before this movie released, everybody would be like. Um, hyping up Richard Madden, but it's like this Irish actor, like Druig, that like not many people have heard of. I'm like, really? oh my gosh, no, yeah, That's it's very cool. cool. Yeah, him and his uh, relationship with another character, their ship is like all over. Uh, yeah, like one of the others, uh, I follow her on Twitter, she's like constantly tweeting about them. Like, I follow oh, really, her. yeah, because she was like, uh, she's a Muslim author, so I was like, you know what, I'll follow her, you know, I see updates about their book, you know, order it when it comes out. And then just her entire content is just that and BTS thirst tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I'll have to check her out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll send you the link. Perfect. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, so just talking more uh, book related. Uh, do you, is there one single like book that really got you into reading? Uh, got me into reading yeah um for at least all of elementary school I didn't really like reading it was more of like a chore to me I'm like oh it's just homework that's what I just did and then I joined a book club in middle school um and that I when I was in middle school at least was when all of a lot of the dystopian movies were coming out like Divergent, Hunger Games, um, Maze Runner, stuff like that you know um so a lot of people were reading those books so like I read Divergent, Hunger Games, Maze Runner and stuff like that and then that's how I really got into reading and then when I joined this book club they gave me other recommendations that you know don't necessarily have a TV adaptation or a film adaptation and it was like Shatter Me who's all Shatter Me which is like a series it's like a YA series it's dystopian there's a little bit of romance in it um it's kind of mediocre but at that time I really loved it I'm like this is this is literature this is amazing wow yes. wow wow yeah it's by Tahada Mafi she's also a Muslim author and there's like six books in this series it's like the like um I feel like her as an author she says she's done writing the series but like every like year or something she'll release a new novella or like a shorter book and I'm like are you really done writing this series um but like I love it because I've been reading it since I was in middle school and I'm nearly finished with college and she just released um another novella like last week I think so it's crazy that I've been reading it for like 10 years and um I love it because it's so nostalgic to me because I read it in middle school so like when I read it, I'm like oh this is this is how I felt when I was in middle school oh, and yeah yeah that's so, what I what got me into reading and um or the book really that got me into reading and um I just read more similar books after that and now I'm unstoppable I guess <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like me with Rick Riordan's books I, no yeah Percy Jackson I read I Percy Jackson Percy Jackson then I moved on to like King Chronicles and he has some yeah then Trials of Apollo came out and I was like I'm too old to be reading this but I'm still <laughs> reading it no, literally, I read, um, he just released a book, Daughter of the Deep, like, uh, two weeks ago, or maybe it's been a month, I'm not sure, um, but it's not even related to Percy Jackson in any way, shape, or form, it's just, like, a new separate standalone, yeah. and I just read it just to feel nostalgic, and it, like, you know, the Rick Riordan humor, it's all in it, it's so I good. loved it so much, yeah. But yeah, yeah, you know, he has that, you know, snarky humor, the, yeah, the references that'll be outdated in about a year. So literally, yeah, like, I love it so much, and I felt like you know nostalgic reading it. Um, even though it's like a middle grade book, it still felt really good reading it. Yeah, you know? I'm starting to get nostalgic, man. Like <laughs> I remember <laughs> Divergent and Hunger Games. Yeah, that was Diver. I feel like the theme with both of those series was like the the first book was really good, <laughs> really really good, um, and then the second book was like okay, and then the last one was just like all right, I'm kind of. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Definitely with Divergent. I can't speak so much to Hunger Games because I never finished I read, it. I, 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 see, I really liked the first Hunger Games book, but then after that, I was like, I'm not really into this. I don't know. Maybe I just don't really like uh, that type of book. You know, the whole, you know, rise against. Dystopian? Fascist, yeah, dystopian, fascist government, you know. Uh, and, right. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I became over. I just thought it was interesting to be said was said in the first book, and like a lot of it was right. like, you know implied and a little more low key. But in the second and third books, they were like, "Yes, they are bad. They do all this stuff in your face." Yeah, yeah. It's just how I felt at the time. I haven't read it. Like, no, yeah, I remember like um, when I was in middle school, at least, or when I was younger. Like 
reading those books, I ate them up and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like amazing. And now I think about it and I critically think about it. And I'm like, um, some of these, some of these books have like racist undertones and stuff like that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and no, yeah, I totally get you. Like, um, especially like with, I think, Hunger Games and like Divergent, like the first two books, they were they were good. They got me into the series in the last book in the trilogy for both of them. I'm like, uh, this oh, was... God. <laughs> exactly. So it's yeah. not good. I remember I, I probably read like half of Divergent in like one night at some, like at some point. Like we were, we were on vacation too, I think. And I was just like in the hotel and I was like, this is so good. And then like the second and third books, it just felt like a chore to have to finish it. I was like, oh, they're, they're ruining oh, everything, yeah. but I've gotten this far. I freaking bought these books to put them on my shelf. I'm going to finish it. Oh, exactly. Like sometimes I'll read the entire series, even if I don't like the second book or whatever in that series, just to finish it, hoping like it'll be good by the end. But I'm still left dis disappointed or unsatisfied. Um, but now I think since I'm older, I'm like, if the book doesn't catch like, you know, my attention in the first few chapters, if I'm not vibing with it, I will DNF it, which like, I don't know if anybody like DNF in like the book world means did not finish. So I'll just like put it to the side. I'm like, this is a waste of my time. I can't, life is too short. I need to read some like good stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes, sometimes I'll continue reading something bad just so, just because it's bad. Like how uh, my brother had these, like, there's like some vampire in like uh middle school and then he goes to high school and stuff and just follows him throughout the years i'm like this is horrific <laughs> continues reading <laughs> dude yeah. some yeah. things are just so bad you have to like you can't oh, yeah, it's like so bad you can't look away but literally i feel the same way for some of the books i read like from like a critic point of view or something they they'd be bad you know this is bad literature but it gives me like a serotonin boost so i'm going to continue reading you know what i mean so like like i can't like when i review them i'm like i'll usually like i'll talk about how i felt while reading them but by saying this is like the next big thing like this needs to be it like turned into a movie or a tv show absolutely not no <laughs> like you know like i don't know yeah i feel that way with sometimes when i read books like I'll continue reading like a bad book or sometimes like when I'll read a book that's um, really popular on BookTok, like everybody's recommending it left and right. And I didn't really enjoy it. And like, how is this book so popular? But I didn't enjoy it like or most of it at all. And I'll continue reading. Um, but you no, know, sometimes I overhype the book in my head and then I have like higher expectations and then I'm left yeah. like, you know, kind of disappointed or under like satisfied. But like, honestly, that's my own fault. Like, <laughs> you know, just because the book gets popular doesn't mean like it's going to be great for everyone, you know? Yeah. I feel that way a lot of times when people are just hyping something up a lot on Netflix and I watch it and I'm like, yeah. why did this gain so much for like, Bird Box? Really? That wasn't. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. at this point, like if I see any sort of traction on so, like a book or tv show and i'm like oh this is slowly getting popular i'll try to like read it or watch it immediately so if like i wait months later and i watch it i have all these high expectations and i'm left under like satisfied and stuff like that so like i try to like like look at stuff i'm like mm, this looks like it'll get popular within a month so let me like read it or watch it right now so i don't have high expectations because sometimes it can that can just happen by default and i don't even realize it mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So like um speaking of books and adaptations, is there a book adaptation that you just absolutely despised? Like I watched Artemis Fowl recently and I really loved the books as a movie. The movie ah. the movie was horrible. It was horrible. Oh my gosh. Um well I haven't watched or read that book, but I'd have to say Percy Jackson because it was like I read I read the book and then um I watched the movie like I watched it when it came out and there it's like it's really 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 bad like the it's the characters are all older and they don't they're it's there's no match or anything between the the book and the movie a lot of people hate the Percy Jackson movie and I agree with that like I feel like if you hadn't read the book and you just watched the movie, you'd probably enjoy it, like, whatever, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But, like, just reading the books and just, like, watching the movie was such a disappointment, I remember. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited because, like, Netflix, or not Netflix, sorry, Disney, Disney Plus, is doing, like, a TV show now um, for Percy Jackson. It's, like, the Percy Jackson TV show on Disney Plus. And the characters will be actually um, their age. Like, they're in middle school in the book. Um, and it's more, t like, you know... Um, 
related to the book. It ha- it's um, very closely to the book because like the author, Rick Riordan, he's also working with Disney on it. So I'm excited for that adaptation. Yeah, that one should be yeah. good. Um, I'm, Percy Jackson, I'm, the movie, we don't speak of it in the book community. <laughs> it's a musical, apparently. I haven't seen it. There's a musical? Yeah. There's for Percy thing. Jackson? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. On the country, but I keep seeing advertisements for it and, um, and tell myself I'm going to go see it. But <laughs> Maybe I should check it out. Yeah, Maybe I, still, I should. I still haven't even seen Hamilton. So. Yeah, you still haven't watched In the Heights, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that one was great. I, I never thought I'd enjoy musicals so much. And then my brother was like, you have to watch In the Heights. And like, I went with my parents and I was like, I don't know why I don't watch more musicals. This stuff is great. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I took like theater in high school. Like, I don't consider myself a theater kid. I just did it to get the art credits, you know? Same. I like I didn't like I wasn't like oh performing in shows and stuff like that I was literally there just for the art credits yeah. but no like I actually enjoyed being in that class and like discovering all these popular musicals and stuff like that so no yeah I enjoy musicals as of today yeah. right now theater too. was the only reason I ever watched high school musical <laughs> I was just sitting there in class I was like because everyone was like oh my god you haven't seen high school musical and like it had been out for a while at that point and then we finally watched yeah. it in class and i was like oh, i, I kind of get it i guess and then they did the yeah. musical as a class and i was like really my my, first, my teacher really wanted me to audition for it and i was like listen i can't do this i i'm not <laughs> i'm not gonna I've be in a musical I've heard you sing a mom. yeah and you never will <laughs> Did they want you for like a certain role or yes, something? There was like one specific role because they were like, you won't have to dance. You won't have to, we know you can't sing or dance, so you can do <laughs> this role. And I was like, okay, I, I really appreciate the offer, but no, thank you. It's like there were like no guys in the, the like it was just all girls that were auditioning. And so like all the background uh, dancers were girls and like they needed more guys. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I totally get you. No, yeah. I they encouraged me to audition for shows and stuff like that while I was like you know taking the class and I'm like no 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 I'll work in the back I'll like do the lights or something like that pull the curtains but yeah. me on stage no that stays in class not in front of like thousands of people definitely not no yeah. it did encourage me to get out of my comfort zone a couple of times and I like remember right. my whole class just being like shocked when I screamed on stage this one time because I was like I was like really in character and I was like I, I was going crazy and everyone was just like the quiet kid is is acting <laughs> like it was no yeah it was great no, I totally i totally get you on that because i'm a very introverted person myself so if it's like if i'm being loud or like drawing attention to myself it's like most embarrassing i'm like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh what am i doing and i think back on i'm like why did i do that like that was not for me but oh, no people are like looking at me and like all eyes are on me and i just have to continue and yeah. like save the, the embarrassment for later yeah definitely it's Omar and I were both like <clears throat> the quiet MSA kids. And I mean, we were also no, like the same. only, like, we were like two of like three guys that were in MSA and in Jasper. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, uh-huh. freshman year. We didn't have, we didn't really have one sophomore year. I don't even think we did, bro. Uh-huh. But we were yeah. just kind of like sitting there in the corner. There's this one picture of us in the yearbook <laughs> <laughs> it, sitting it was, on the table. Mm-hmm, yeah. That one, yeah, dude. Uh-huh. That, that was, that was oh, yeah, very I totally like you. Embarrass ourselves on we went to, yeah, yeah. Then we went and did debate together, so we could. Oh, cool! Like, you guys had like a whole journey that. together. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah, it's been, and now we have a podcast. Like it's crazy. It's been like seven years. I love that for you. Oh my gosh, I love that for you guys. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah, but you were saying something. Oh yeah. Um. My high school, like, I went to high school in the South. Like, it was in Tennessee. Um, I live in Chicago right now, which is, it's more liberal to the Democratic state. Yeah. I I, Um, I know. (laughs) I used to live there. But you did? Where do you live now? I'm in Dallas now. Yeah. Oh, cool. Very cool. Oh, awesome. No, yeah. But, like, my... Where are you going to Chicago? Yeah, what's Um, Paul University. Oh, nice. I have some friends that go there. That's, That's crazy. Yeah, I love that school. It's a very liberal arts school, and it's... Is made for me but nice. um uh like my high school didn't have any sort of msa or anything like i went to a very they were diverse but it was still majority like very white very redneck people that went to this yeah. high school um they didn't have any sort of msa i think i was um like one out of four of the hijabis that went to oh, wow. school at that time like all my four years one of them were my sister the other one was a teacher and the 
like the last one was the teacher's daughter. So we're all just like okay. connected with one another. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't until like I got to like like college and stuff that like I joined the MSA and got more involved in my community and everything like that. Um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what I've been missing out on. It's like so diverse. Everybody's like so, and like there's a billion hijabis like everywhere I look. Like there's no way I could stand out. And I kind of crave that because I'm a very introverted person. I don't want to stand out. Um, but then I'm gonna do TikTok, which is like <laughs> kind of like uh, that doesn't stand out a little bit. Kind of so, cancels yeah. out, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was in the corner, just like, have I seen her before? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I totally get you. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I'll, I'll say that I'm introverted and then I'll, like, talk on a podcast about, like, very personal things that have happened in my life. Oh, literally. I'll, I'll sit there afterwards, like, am I? Like, do it. But it's just so much easier when there's no people around. Oh, exactly. I'm the same <laughs> way. Like, I, like on TikTok, like, yeah, m- maybe millions of people are watching me or whatever the heck. But I don't even think about that because, yeah. like, I'm just in my room recording silly videos and, like, um, just talking with you guys and it just it feels very casual and that's like something I crave this is something like I'm used to it's something that I'm comfortable yeah. with you know exactly it's like a platform made for like for people like us that want to yeah. it, it's really nice because I'm meeting someone new like I, I've forced myself into meeting new people in the real world and it's like a it's like a whole rush to like even if someone's sitting next to you in a classroom just to turn on turn over and be like hey what's your name is like a whole thing that I have to go through in my head like okay so I'm gonna do this <laughs> but then <laughs> inviting someone to be on my podcast and then posting it on the internet and like on TikTok and Instagram is like it's just a conversation I'm having with someone new and learning something and it, it kind of has made me realize that doing it in real life maybe is not so different um oh, yeah. yeah no yeah I totally get you because like I like I think about that myself too like I, I can't I can barely introduce myself like sometimes I'll have my little sister order food for me like at restaurants and stuff like that because I can't talk to the waiter or whoever's taking my order oh, man. um so oh yeah but like here I am on TikTok and I'm like just like blabbling and screaming left yeah. and right sometimes <laughs> Um, and I'm like, yeah. hmm, am I really an introvert? Am I like, what's like the middle? It's like the amnivert or Ambivert. something. Omnivert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. I'm like, hmm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Maybe. 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 Um, <laughs> omnivert. Oh. <laughs> uh, ambi, yeah. Ambivertuous. I don't know. Ambivert. Yeah. Something like Ambivert. that. No, yeah. Um, no, yeah. It's it's yeah. weird how like my bravery comes out in like from places versus like where it needs to come out it doesn't yeah yeah because I, th- I think because you know you don't see all those millions of people watching you but yeah them, all right can't if comprehend I, that number yeah. i really can't yeah, i you, can't comprehend you know, 10 you, people watching me yeah you're doing this on a stage you know surrounded by hundreds of people it'd probably be a lot harder oh yeah absolutely no yeah that's why musical theater no i was working in the back drawing the curtains yeah. doing lights stuff like that not on stage yeah Presenting in front of a class is nerve wracking for me. I can't imagine doing it in front, on a stage. No, oh, literally, yeah, I hated presentations and stuff like that, especially the ones that I did in high school. I'd always practice like in front of the mirror, like the night before, and then I like get up there and I still stutter over my words and trip over everything. But no, yeah, I just like tell myself I have to get through it and then never think about it again. But then it'll be like 3 a.m. and I'll get flashbacks. I'm like, holy shit, this oh. is like, this like affected me. It's the worst, bro. When you're just sitting there thinking about it, like, man, I'm so, I was probably sounded so stupid there. <laughs> no, it yeah. Happens, it happens when we're editing the podcast. I'm like, I'm, oh. I'm listening to myself and I'm like, <laughs> all right, the podcast is canceled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm all the videos. No, yeah, yeah I... Sometimes, like, I'll make, like, random videos, like, in the moment for my TikTok, and I'll, like, oh, my gosh, I'm so funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> and I look back on them, and I'll be, like, that was very embarrassing. I hope no one ever watches that video <laughs> again. It's still there. It's public for anybody else to watch, but I'll never watch it or rewatch it myself again. I don't talk a lot in my videos. I use, like, sounds and stuff, which I think is, like, what I like about TikTok. It's, like, yeah. you can still get an audience using other people's sounds and, um, whatever the heck you don't actually have to talk all the time i'm not really good at talking um then yeah, like there's a like few videos oh, thanks. <laughs> i think that maybe because there's just like three of us here and i'm like yeah. i'm at home and i'm comfortable and everything but, but yeah sometimes i'll look at my past videos i'm like what was i thinking like yeah. that was not funny that was cringy and people are laughing at me not with me yeah i've learned to just like if i ever feel nervous about something just like take a deep breath 
don't think about it and then just speak really loudly and clearly because there's a difference between like and I, I had to do this when I was volunteering recently and there was like literally no one it was it was a mess. I walked in and nobody knew what was going on. They like asked me like, what's our plan? Cause we had like this workshop that we were doing for kids and I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't even supposed to be there that day. And then they just called me in cause they had to like last minute and they were like, mom, what's the plan? I was like, what do you mean? What's the plan? I thought you had a plan. <laughs> right. And then I was like super nervous before doing it. But all I did was like, Every time I had to tell the kids to do, because these are like middle school kids, really difficult to deal with. And before I had to say something, I was just like, okay, just loud and clear so they can hear you. And I would just be like, all right, everyone. And then like, everybody's just silent, you know? And I'm like, okay, now I have their attention. And then like, you know, then the confidence starts rushing and all like the adrenaline comes in. And then from there, it just carries oh, yeah. itself. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah, I totally get you on that. Like, um, I think that's what I mostly did when I like did like the little skits and stuff I did in theater mm-hmm. was like, I just, I'll just look look far into the distance. I won't even look at anybody's eyes or something. And then I'll just like, boom, speak really loudly. And then just like, it just all pops out. I don't know where, like nowhere, like as you said, like the adrenaline is just like oozing out. Um, Yeah, like that's like a savior right there. And like, Mm -hmm. good for you because I'm not like they, that's not very last minute. I'm not good at doing anything last minute. I always overthink. (laughs) So, Yeah. Yeah, I just learned to, something I learned in debate was if you speak loudly and clearly, that's like 90% of the job. That's it. That's all but, it is. They don't even care about what you're saying, dude. I guess that's half uh, of it. My best speech was like, I did not know what I was talking about ever. We were in practice. The only thing I did was speak loud and clear and confident. And they were like, wow, this is a really good speech. And I was like, I didn't say anything different than I was before. Why is it good now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like almost like the bare minimum. And everybody's like, oh, my gosh, I was like so good. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. Omar and I did a fun drill in debate practice one time where we were, huh? <laughs> you want, you want to tell, you want to tell the story, Omar? <laughs> but uh, the, you know which one I'm talking about, the, the we need to destroy the United States one. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I had, I had a real issue with speaking out loud. I still do. Um, that's why half the recording, we have to turn up my volume just because I don't speak loudly. I enough. have his volume turned up on discord, like, so that initially, and then I have to turn up his volume afterwards as well. Yeah, uh. so, yeah, basically. So basically to get me to talk louder, they put headphones on me so I couldn't hear myself, right? Because you, cause if you can't hear how loud you are, you'll talk louder. Um, uh. And basically they have me they all catch phrases. <laughs> and it's like, it was just, just random things. And then we need to destroy the United States. Yeah. Was one of them. <laughs> the FBI is going to be at home waiting for me when I get off the bus. <laughs> it was a fun drill like we were all just like alternating it was like me i'd be like we need to destroy the united states and omar would say we need to de-. i don't know why that happened like it was just like he, they just said like imagine you're saying this in a debate i don't know where that would come from and like listen we're brown man we can't just say these things that loudly <laughs> no literally i was like good for you guys no yeah i don't know how you guys do it. it's a bit risque but no yeah i love that for you guys <laughs> yeah debate was an experience but certainly being an introvert is uh it it provides you with a lot like you understand both sides you know because you understand like that power of like the adrenaline rush and feeling confident Mm -hmm. and why people are so like used to it now and like they kind of get become an extrovert and like they like that because i get it you know like i understand it must be real nice to feel comfortable around everyone um but then there's like the side of the introvert that's like you know, I kind of just want to be alone most of, like a lot of the time. And also when there's people around, I'm not like, like you said, like talking to a waiter sometimes. It's just not like, I don't want to, I never, ever want to have to be the person that's like, hey, you got my order wrong. Like I, I hate having oh, to do yeah. that. <laughs> so it, it's yeah. nerve wracking. Yeah, no, literally sometimes like, especially like, you know, being in America and stuff like that. Um, Like I'll ask like, oh, don't leave the bacon on like, the mashed potatoes and stuff like that and they leave it on there oh, and i'm like I, I can't go back and be like oh my gosh i can't actually eat this i'll throw it out i'm like i can't yeah. i can't go yeah it's, um, it's tough oh uh, yeah it, it's tough you know being an introverted and like having you know um and dietary restrictions due to your religion so oh, yeah that's a lot but it, yeah. it's, it's certainly a journey to overcome it um it's a fun absolutely one. no yeah that like adrenaline rush that you're talking about like how you say you kind of like crave it and like yeah. you like that feeling you get when you you're in that moment like speaking really loudly i like no yeah i try to um that as yeah. many yeah, it's, times it's as like i can when effect, right like 
Yeah, like, yeah, right, absolutely. Right before it, you're incredibly apprehensive, and it's like when you're at the front of the line. It was like this is this is maybe not a good idea. Maybe I shouldn't have gone on this roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but like Absolutely. in the moment, you're just like, yeah, this is great. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I remember, like um, going to like amusement parks and stuff like that. Like just like like that gut feeling inside like the pit of your stomach when you like see all those rides and you're waiting in line and just like that anticipation as the line is getting shorter and you're finally on the ride and then you go through it obviously and then you love it and then you're back in line again so it's just like you have to just get through it so you'll be good for the next time you know yeah definitely it's a it's a fun uh it's it's certainly a roller coaster in and of itself absolutely Um, yeah but um, one thing I'm super curious about now that we've talked about not being able to be ourselves <laughs> around people and you know like having and being super introverted to kind of flip the switch, what's it like having so many people follow you and being on TikTok so often? I mean, like, what, how has your life changed since before TikTok? Oh yeah, um, I mean, it's changed in some ways that um, in other ways it hasn't. Like, um, I didn't, I wasn't in any sort of like social media community or anything before. Like, I mean, I had Instagrams and like, like I was in social media, but I didn't have any sort of platform prior to TikTok. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, like I said, I'm a very introverted person. Um, so it's like when I was getting all this traction, I'm like, this is kind of a big deal. Like what's going on? Um, and I guess like before really the main difference is I didn't read as much as I do now. Now I binge read. I read like books after the other. I barely watch like Netflix or TV anymore. Huh. I read mostly, and I've also like spent a lot of money on books, which is also a negative. Like before, I think I had maybe thirty physical books that I spent money on, and they were all like from the library, like the library sales I can get for like twenty five cents. Huh. And now I have like, don't even want to say it. it's Did like thousands. You hand over to your bookshelf. I saw you show it in in your TikTok one yeah. time. <laughs> right here look at that <laughs> like no literally i had maybe like one like cubby worth of books prior to book talk but now and this is not even it this is like all that That's i have in my all. room yeah i keep i like built some bookshelves in my sister's room and she's away <sighs> at college right now so her room's empty so there's just a whole wall of books oh my God. um in her room they're, they're not even her books they're mine and then downstairs um in like our living room tv lounge area there's built-in bookshelves um around the tv it's all it's like pre-made and my mom wanted to put like you know decor in them and stuff like that like on the bookshelves but oh, man. all my books are there it's just all books everywhere <laughs> which is insane like at one point i will sell most of them because it's kind of getting insane like all this but it's like most of them actually I, i'm not spending my money on i don't really have a disposable income it's yeah. like the companies that i work with like the publishing companies and stuff That's like cool. that they send me books constantly like in one day i think i get like maybe five or six packages just of books yeah you got oh, one wow. just like today or yesterday right i, I saw what? i don't know it was uh, it was like something you posted recently <laughs> but oh today oh yeah so like sometimes like an unboxings and stuff like that right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i posted an unbo- unboxing today it was sponsored for like um it was for penguin random house i can't remember <laughs> or no, no no it was for harper harper collins oh, um yeah. But yeah but sometimes like they'll literally just send me a box and be like unbox it on video and we'll pay you this much money and blah 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 put a link in your bio leave it for 24 hours and i'm like okay yeah sure let's do it cool <laughs> well, that must be great. yeah how did yeah. Does, when did that start did that start happening like did everything just like take off the moment that you posted that video? They got like two million likes, or was it like a gradual, mm-hmm. like a like a couple months later, you started getting more views and yeah, the company started yeah, it was out. definitely gradual, like you said. Like my first video that um, did well, I think right now has close to a million views, but the one that I did with like two million likes or whatever, it was more later when I had around like two fifty thousand followers or something. Right. Um, and like i think it wasn't until like i had like thirty thousand followers that i got my first sponsorship and before i didn't even have like my email or anything in my bio like i didn't even know that like to get these sponsorships and stuff like that you had to put an email in your bio so i did that and then after as soon as i put the email in my bio was when i got sponsorships coming at me um and no yeah it was like i think my first sponsorships i did with with penguin random house and it was just 
literally just me unboxing books and telling like oh, oh my gosh read this book it's so good um and like i didn't even read it but like i'm like oh my gosh yeah read it <laughs> um it was good yeah you, so right? yeah that's true i guess <laughs> yeah right you know yeah like now um before like i even reached out myself to like certain like companies that i wanted to work with and stuff like that and most of the time like um you don't get like no answers but you get like they ghost you so like they don't answer at all which is an answer in itself like yeah. um so like i think i reached to like 30 companies at one time like i got all their emails i did i put them all in like a blind carbon copy and then sent them an email like hey i'm amen i do tiktok i'd like to review your books here's my like credentials and blah 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 um and then i'll get like one or two maybe like three like responses after that um, but anybody that didn't reply to me, just like they didn't reply to me at all. It wasn't like I got yeah. like, oh, no, we don't want to work with you. But like not replying is an answer within itself. But I think at this point, like I get so many emails a day. I have a, I have a manager that like, like manages it for me. So nice. um, like um, just I do things that like I'm actually passionate, like passionate in. And like um, I want to promote books that I know my I would enjoy and my audience would enjoy as well so if like if I'm out here promoting like a biography randomly because and I've never talked about biographies before that's kind of like amen what are you doing this is not you you know so it's like I want to be truthful and honest um so I'll take like um like I don't really do many book reviews but I'll do like sponsorships and stuff like that in which I'll talk about the book and like encourage my followers to go buy it with a link in my bio and stuff like that that's um um because yeah thanks by the way but yeah um that's just like pretty much how it is now I like my my niche is book talk so I want to work with book companies it'd be kind of weird if I just did like books that are outside of the genre or like literally yeah if I just like randomly start promoting like oh my gosh look at this um I don't know raid lawnmower that like you should buy Ray yeah, yeah. Multiple games. Oh, literally yeah <laughs> yeah there's like just some sometimes i get like random sponsorship emails from like like um of stuff i'm like i like sometimes even like baby products i'm like do i look like a mother to you guys i'm like what, <laughs> what? no yeah so i don't know it's weird but like i'll try to filter it out and see like oh where's all the book stuff like where's stuff that can like yeah. that will align with my account and um i say yes to those a lot of the times at this point i say no and um but before I was I guess a bit more naive and I'm like oh my gosh I gotta I gotta do everything I gotta yeah. say yes to everything and um one thing like I'll tell especially like um people that I'm mutual with like on book talk and they like they're finally like gaining traction on their account they're doing sponsorships for the first time is like don't work with authors directly work with their companies so like yeah. if an author reaches out to you unless they have like you know um quote unquote hype behind them or they've had like some sort of influence behind them then like work with them directly but if not work with like the publishers so like mm-hmm. because the publishers they work with the author they work with you they're they're like the middle you know they're, they're like the glue mm-hmm. they know what they're doing they've done it before and no yeah i've like done like random sponsorships that like i regret doing and it was because i was naive and i didn't really have help and now i speak with like other people that have done this for like months or even years or whatever i'm like how do you talk to these companies how do you be like oh i want to do, do this for this rate and how do you like communicate with them yeah. um but yeah before it was like i fall into anything and then i would do stuff for free which now i tell like i know like i shouldn't be doing stuff for free yeah so yeah yeah that's yeah. that's awesome uh, i feel like there's a story in there somewhere about like a sponsorship that you regret but i don't want to force well, you in case you're not supposed to well, i'll tell you i'll tell oh, you I'll, right? i won't name names obviously okay. i won't name names right. but um this author reached out to me on instagram dm and asked me to promote her book and i'm like oh my gosh yes let's let's do it and that was like the first thing that like really came to me i'm like oh my gosh this is like a sponsorship i didn't like she was going to send me the book for free mm-hmm. um but like she wasn't going to pay me or anything like that. Um, and I didn't expect her to, or like think that she should have. Um, wow. And then she sent it to me and, I, and I'm like, okay, can you give me till the end of this month? Um, I'm kind of busy right now with like exams and finals and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then I'll read it and then I'll review it. And then I read it. I uh, read it. I read it and I hated it. I hated it. Absolutely. It was so bad. So many typos. <laughs> it was literally like how it was. 
independent author so the author herself published it on amazon mm-hmm. books so she doesn't have like a company or publicist or anything behind her and i kind of made like wouldn't necessarily say fake but i'm like oh my gosh i just read this book if you like vampires which is blah 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 and romance you might like it too i never said like oh i liked it i just said if you like these you might like this um but i hate it and she was very passive aggressive with me she's like when are you gonna post a review when are you gonna post a review i'm like i haven't even read it i i told you like i'm doing like my panels right now like school comes first before everything um so yeah she it was just very annoying and now i have like people that um like I can reach out to and be like, hey, have you worked with this person before? Like sometimes a lot of like I'm in a group chat with other book talkers and nice. a lot of times we'll get reached out by the same company at the same time. And we'll come into the group chat and be like, hey, did you get reached out by so and so? What did they ask you um, to do? Like, what's your rates? How much are they, are they offering? Blah, blah, blah. So we just like communicate with one another. So it's kind of like we're all like being very sneaky behind the screens. Oh, wow. <laughs> but <That's cool>. yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. Now I know not to like work with people directly, but work with like companies that have had a history of working with influencers and such. And like they know what they're doing because before I fell into like all the traps and stuff like that. And it was weird. And even like recently, like sometimes like publishing companies that start out to um, connect with influencers don't really know what they're doing. So this was i won't name drop the company or anything because i literally have a sponsorship that i'm supposed to post like this week for them (laughs) but i was supposed to film like i filmed an unboxing for them for their for a new book that's being released um it's exactly what they asked for it was in their contract we both signed it i'm I'm supposed to do an enthusiastic unboxing i sent them the draft um to like review i'm like hey what do you think and they're like oh we loved it but it's very like ad like the author thinks you should do like a review style or something something in which you're like talking about the plot and what you loved about it i'm like this is not what we agreed on we both signed a contract that said i would do an unboxing yeah. um and i just like make it enthusiastic and i'm like oh my gosh here's a link in my bio go check it out if you're interested yeah. and i'm like this is taking so um i felt like i think maybe i was a bit mm, kind of like passive aggressive but at the same time like i would I told my friends about this that were in the group chat. I'm like, I'm working with this company that we all know about and they're being very like, you know, um, unprofessional and just they're yeah. making it very hard on me because now they're like, like I sent them the whole video. It was edited and everything. Um, they're like, scratch that, do it again, start, start over. You know, I'm like, that's not what we agreed on on the yeah. contract. And like, there's like a contract involved and like we both sign it there's like liability there and stuff like that so I'm like if this is if you're going against our contract you're gonna like I went this is this sounds kind of bad but I went with what my manager tells me to do yeah. she's like you need to tell them to compensate you extra for the time that you'll be taking to um you know start over basically you know what yeah. I mean right. um and like right now I'm in finals right now and I have like stuff like to do before the semester yeah. ends and it's like thanksgiving yeah. and i'm like you know i'm trying to take a breather and blah 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 mm-hmm. and i'm like okay fine i'll send over this email and you know, like honestly it was just like i had to have the guts to send that sort of email and be like hey i it's either like we cancel this p- partnership because or you have to compensate me a little extra for refilming the entire thing yeah um work. sending over a new contract and everything um or yeah, like I said, we scratch it. And they're like, and then I just got a response this morning. They're like, oh, we're sorry about the inconvenience. And we're sorry that you know, you're you going through, you know, you have all this st- like stuff on your plate, like finals and you're going through this and that and blah, blah, blah. Um, and so they agreed that they'd compensate me extra for the time I'd be taking to refilm the entire thing. Okay, <laughs> so, yeah, I, like at first I wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. I'm like, oh, fine, I'll just, I'll just film it. You know, it's, yeah. it's whatever. But like, it became such an inconvenience because like, um, I'm trying to get so many things done before the end of this week. So I can yeah. just take a breather for myself. And my manager's like, no, 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 no. You gotta, you gotta stick up for yourself. You gotta be like, I want this. I want that. It has to be done this way because they're working with you, with your followers, with your yeah. account. Um, so it's not like they're losing. I mean, they're losing you if you, um, but they're working with you and like essentially like um, um, they're working for you. If that makes sense, yeah. even though they're the ones that reach out. Um, but yeah, yeah. yeah Sometimes it can be very weird and very like challenging to like um, communicate with these companies but now i feel like i have like i have people that help me i have sort of an understanding of how to communicate with them 
So it's much easier now to like ask exactly for what I want. Okay, that's great to hear. Have you ever had the opportunity to like work with an author you're a fan of before? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Well, yeah, so like usually, um, I mean, I did work with, um, it wasn't like Rick Riordan directly, but it was a publishing company that published uh, Daughter of the Deep, um, which oh, is his yeah. new standalone book that came out. And that's that was with Disney Books. And um, no, yeah, I, I, I like promoted that book. I wow. posted it like last week, I think, or no, it's been about two weeks now. But no, I was just talking about it, and like I think that's like the most like kind of starstruck I've had, like moment I've had. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. this guy. Yeah, I've been reading his book since middle school, and now like his like publishing company wants to like work with me. That's insane. Wow. Um, but like I think um, the most uh, like the biggest company I've ever worked at was Target. And they paid me a lot of money for that, which was like, oh my gosh, am I supposed <laughs> to be getting this money, this much money on a regular basis? Um, but no, yeah, that's like the yeah, most the decimal point they missed. <laughs> no, yeah, like at first when I got the email and it said like, oh, you're you'll be getting, we'll we'll offer you this much compensation for if you um, make this video, um, and it's like talking books about talking about books that are um, available at Target. Um, and at first I thought it was a scam because I do get like scam emails here and there. I'm like, oh, this is probably a scam. And then I replied, I'm like, and then I'm like, hmm. I just like replied um, kind of like um, for fun, you know, just like didn't think because it would be anything. I'm like, I'd like to be part of this, but only if we do it for this rate. And I doubled it. And just like, because I'm like, this is a scam. This is not real, you know? And they're like, oh yeah, we can comply with that. What? And then like, wow. let's like, let's have like a zoom meeting and we'll talk about it further. And I'm like, wait, so this was real. I just like, I just oh like kind of like sent them like a crap email. Um, I'm like, oh, let's man. just double the part thinking like it was fake. And I just like fed into it. Like, I'm like, just honestly like entertaining myself, you yeah. know? Thank God you didn't say anything else. Like, <laughs> thank oh God yeah, I wasn't sure, like, this is Target. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank God. I was like, mm, this sounds like a scam delete. Or like, I just yeah. like, sometimes like I'll, I can I can know like when an emails a scam directly and I'll just yeah. delete it immediately. But no, I'm like, let me just reply to this, see how they reply. Yeah. Um, because a lot of times how they reply determines of like if they're a scam company or if they're actually like target or blah blah blah. So and so. Yeah. And they're like, oh, let's get on a Zoom meeting. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I got on the Zoom meeting and it's like three people there and they work with Target and stuff like that. And no, they didn't bat an eye to what I said. Let's double the compensation wow. for her. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I got the check recently and I just gave it to my mom for like raising me and everything. I'm like, nice. this is the most I've ever been paid. So I'll just give it to you for like being my mom. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd assume they would have been spent on more books. So literally, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Either that or like just tuition. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah. Target paying yeah. your tuition. That'd be cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. They, and in fact, like I'm open to more like sponsorships with Target anytime soon. Literally, if you guys, if Target's listening to this podcast, please sponsor me again. <laughs> if Target's sponsor listening us. to this podcast, <laughs> I will die. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Sponsor all three of us. Sponsor this whole podcast. Yes. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll do a half an hour long advertisement. Yeah. Uh, no, literally, I will do anything at, for them at this point. And they <laughs> require the bare minimum for me. It was like, oh, just talk about books that are available at Target within this genre. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I sent them the draft. I'm like, oh, love it. Cute. Whatever. Add these hashtags, tag us in the caption, and boom, that's it. And yeah, they, um, nice. a lot of times when companies want a video to get like traction and stuff, they'll send, they'll ask you to send them like an ad link. So you get an ad link through your TikTok, like the post oh, in nice. itself. You send them the code and then they, boost it so that video like um, a lot of people can, like it'll can tell like you know how on your furry page you'll get ads here and there and they'll say yeah. sponsored at the bottom so a lot of people will just like scroll through them but it still gets the views not many likes i think it has like 150,000 likes but it has nearly 10 million views which just is the ratio is... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so bad <laughs> yeah, oh my kidding. god I'm, like, I'm, just, I'm, like, I'm just like oh yeah whatever just 150,000 like oh just that's what I get on a daily basis. I should be thankful for like the one like that I get. <laughs> um, but like the ratio on it is so bad because they did the um, yeah. a boost link. So like people are constantly seeing it over and over again on their For You page. Yeah. Um, 
but not liking it because it, it's obvious that it is an ad yeah. you know um that's so really yeah that's cool. an... <laughs> oh yeah yeah it was it was fun i appreciate it upload this later this week just yeah i'm just gonna add target a whole bunch of times <laughs> do it yeah. to honestly we're what? open to sponsorship we're open to anything yeah. i'll even take walmart <laughs> oh yeah any of these billion the dollar value. companies <laughs> they're listening <laughs> no great sam's club, I don't know Costco, <laughs> wants- yeah Literally. Costco, sam's club we'll just add all of them i actually added uber on our last tiktok <laughs> because <laughs> I, like, I was talking about them and like this one um billboard that they had i was like at uber thought they were slick i was like you know even if they hate this like any any kind of response is a good response but I, they didn't see it obviously i was like you know what i might as well just at them nothing what could go wrong I, oh yeah like i have this running joke that i um make on my tiktok and like oh i'm stealing books from barnes and nobles and stuff like it's, it's a joke i don't steal or anything but I think one or uh, like a couple times the actual Barnes and Noble has commented <laughs> on those videos. No way. And no, yeah. And like now we follow each other on TikTok, <laughs> which is like insane. And I'm like, here yeah. I am, be like, oh my gosh, running to steal books from Barnes and Nobles. It's like this running joke that I have. <laughs> um, and they're like, and they'll comment on it. Like I won't tag them or anything. They'll just comment like, "Amen, we've been through this. We need to stop." <laughs> it's so, so funny great. because like it's like this company, but you can tell there's like there's like probably this like millennial just working behind it, yeah, <laughs> or something. All the TikTok um, a lot accounts of, are so funny. Oh, well, literally! Like, have you seen those videos on your free page? Like, they'll um in which like in the comment section, there's just like a bunch of companies co- commenting, yeah. and stuff like that. And like, oh, my boss woke me up for this or something like that. <laughs> it's so hilarious. I love the company like TikToks, yeah, especially like them in, my, my in the comments. The Duolingo one. Yes, <laughs> no, they're who is running that account because <laughs> I really just like their videos are so funny and insane, and I love them. Yeah, so, um, whoever's running it they deserve more money than whatever they're getting. No, right literally, <laughs> they are putting their time and effort in it. And it has, like, pretty big following. And I see them in, like, almost every comment section that has to do with companies and everything. They're always, they're everywhere. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, whoever is running this account, or even if it's, like, a team running this account, is really, they need a raise. They need yeah. something. But, no, yeah, I it's see their videos all the time. So funny. It's always so funny, too, when the official TikTok account comments on something. I saw this ah. one, like, really dumb, like, the stupidest video, one of the stupidest things I had seen. It was, like, but it was meant to be stupid, right? And, like, it was just, yeah. like, one of those really random videos that, like, looks like it's a fever dream, right? And so it was just yeah. so dumb. And I scrolled through the comments, and I see the official TikTok, like, Talk, commented and they were like dude i just opened the app come on and i was like no, no. i love it when they when they're like so like real like that they're so yeah. like relatable and like they speak to like like the gen z humor you know what i mean yeah, exactly i love that i've never had like tiktok ever comment on one of my videos maybe that's that's like a goal for me like just to have them comment on one of my videos that would be great i would love that i would literally die um <laughs> But no, yeah, I love it when, like, I see, like, the official, especially if the video is going very viral. There's, like, this one video that I saw, and it was, like, like you said, it was, like, stupid. It was, like, this, it was a stitch. So, the beginning of the video was, like, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but, like, it's this trend in which you put, like, a, like, a mug in front of you and you throw pencils in it. Yeah. And, like, you say affirmations and stuff like that. Yeah. And she's, like, "Uh, should I get a dog? And she throws, like, a pen in the cup, and then the cat picks it up. (laughs) Then the stitch is, like. You, you know what I'm talking yeah. about, right? This is like, oh my gosh, your cat was like, no, 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 we're not getting a dog girl. And I'm like, yeah. that was so unnecessary, but That's it's so like, funny. It was, right? It was like, I saw that and I was like, how does this have this? That had more likes. When I saw it, that had like 5 million likes and the original had like 3 million. And I was like, guys, yeah. she just added something completely unnecessary, but everyone knew that it was completely yeah. unnecessary. No, literally, yeah. And I love that. No, like, and I saw the official TikTok like comment on it, and they're like, "That's exactly what we were thinking." <laughs> yeah, That's I so just funny. I love that. They're so hilarious. Yeah, yeah TikTok's just it, it's it's something. Like I I just wonder if like other social media platforms are like TikTok, like YouTube. Like the first half of the video was just a Logan Paul video, and then Game Theory. So literally, <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, if if you're just like scrolling through YouTube like that. No, YouTube usually takes you down like a certain hole that you're just like right. going going further into. Those have been 
But I was watching a history video and now I'm looking at mac and cheese. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. So Honestly, <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Like, at this point, I don't even, like, go through other social medias at all because TikTok is so easy and fast-paced. And, I, like, I feel like, especially on BookTok, the reason why certain books are super popular is because books translate way better on TikTok, like, the book talk, yeah, the book side of TikTok versus, like, um, other communities. Like, there is, like, the book side of YouTube, the yeah. BookTube, and, like, um, Instagram, it's Bookstagram and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but, like you'd really have to be a certain type of person to really immerse yourself in those communities. Like yeah. I'm the type of person, like I need information quick. If I, if like the person doesn't like say whatever in the first five seconds I'm scrolling or whatever the heck, yeah. like I have to get, like, they have to get my attention. You know what I mean? So like, I don't even watch YouTube videos anymore, like, or um watch TV at all. Really. I yeah. only watch TV when I'm eating. So it takes me forever okay. to get through like one show and which like some people like will binge it over the weekend. Yeah. But like I'm only eating it. I'm only I'm only watching it while I'm eating um for one meal and then like I'll stop in the middle of the episode or whatever yeah. and I'm like done with my meal. I'm like I'm done with my meal, I'm done watching TV. Yeah. Um whereas TikTok, like I can scroll through it for hours and now I'm like, oh my gosh, the the sun just rise, the birds are chirping. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it's <laughs> it's, it's the sun's yeah. rising. Yeah, Ahmad, has, Ahmad has deleted for a while, and then I did. I had to delete it. I couldn't like. I, I no, literally yeah. for my for my own like productivity, I couldn't get anything done if I still had the, that and Reddit. I was like, and Rocket League, <laughs> I had to delete all of those <laughs> things so that I could just like focus on on the things I had to do, and then you know, I got no, yeah. done. Was, to the that was definitely. Thing. Yeah, I feel the same way. That was definitely me during Ramadan. I just deleted every piece of social media yeah. so I could just like focus on the month and everything. Um, but then I just re-downloaded it like a week after. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, like I, so, I, I used, you know, actually you were my excuse to re-download it because I couldn't actually look at your account <laughs> to, to like, because I, like, I hadn't had it for a really long time. And then I was like, dude, like, I don't know what she's posted recently. And Omar like had sent me your account and I like TikTok wasn't let me, letting me look at it through the, through the app. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have to read down. I'm going to do it for the culture. And then like, I, I looked through <laughs> everything. And then I was like, you know, I also kind of need to know what other podcasts post on TikTok so we can know what to post on TikTok. And I started doing that. And then like, it was like 3 a.m. And I was like looking at like the, that random video that TikTok had commented on that like somebody just like, was pouring milk into like a coffee thing and then like shook it like the Dairy Queen thing and then like went up to a car oh, window. Yeah. It, was, like, there, it was like a fever dream. And I was like looking at looking around, I was like, it's, it's 4 a.m. What am I doing here? <laughs> no, no, yeah, I'm the same way. No, TikTok is, has really consumed my life. And like at this point, I can't delete it because like, I don't know if you guys knew this, but like, um, like if you make videos, you save them to your drafts. If you delete the app, it deletes all your drafts. So I, like uh, that deletes all my videos. So like sometimes like the app will glitch and stuff like that. And you know, have you have you ever like deleted an app and then re-downloaded it because it's glitching? Yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, let's just like refresh everything. I can't do that at this point. Okay. Like I haven't deleted it because like if I delete it, it deletes all my drafts and everything. Okay. Um. No. Yeah. So there are some points in which I'm like. Let's just take a break. I won't post today. I'll just focus on school. I need to get all this stuff done yeah. and like work and blah, blah, blah. Um, but no, yeah, at this point, I have to like lock my phone in like another room because like I'll get on it and get on TikTok. Yeah. And a lot of the times it's honestly, this is kind of like feeding into my superiority complex, but just me watching my own videos over and over again. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so hilarious. I'm so good. I'm the queen. <laughs> and it's not it's not me just like scrolling through TikTok. It's literally me just watching my own videos. And I talked to that about that with like other creators and stuff like that. I'm like, do you guys like just like you guys are obviously all on TikTok all the time, but do you ever really just scroll through your 40 page or are you scroll scrolling through your own content? And they're like, yep, we scroll through our own content for hours and just like yeah, repeatedly watch the same video over and over again. Yeah, that's like me with the podcast. I think when I'm driving with someone, I just put it on. It's like, it's <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's such a serotonin yeah. boost. No, yeah, because it's like familiar and you like know what to expect and stuff like yeah. that. Um, so yeah, that's how I feel sometimes with like TV shows and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, um, like sometimes I'll rewatch the same TV show just because like I know what to expect and it I won't so be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. I've done that too. Like where I know like I, that's when I know 
I, I, I can judge my own like mental health based on what I'm watching because if I'm watching like a new anime uh, then I know I'm doing great but if I'm re-watching The Office for like the eighth time it's like dude I need help I need to talk to someone about this that is this. so true <laughs> that is so true I'm so with you on that my my guilty pleasure for that is like The Vampire Diaries which isn't even that great of a show but I watched it like in middle school and like I rewatch it again for like the nostalgic feelings and stuff like yeah. that and sometimes I do that with books too like I'll reread the same exact book that I read I'm like a while ago because i know it's good i know what to expect um and yeah. i'll convince myself like um oh i don't know what to expect and i'm like oh my gosh i'm reading this for the first time they can oh, never really get that feeling back never yeah no yeah yeah i used to do that with my books but i was like i know what's coming yeah i, I, oh, yeah. I know the exact words i've read this reread this like 12 times that was me with like the alex Ryder series like uh-huh. i read the early middle school and then i was like i moved to the u.s and i was like all right but I, I I can get books for free now because I lived in Southie before and we didn't really have libraries there. Uh, yeah. But if we did, they were too far away and didn't really go. And I was like, no. let me free read all my old books. And I was like, mm-hmm. this is boring. I know every... And the thing with like Alex, it's like a spy... It's like a spy thriller, right? Oh, so no. if you know it's coming, you know, there's no appeal to it. Yeah, I'd imagine. <laughs> the only good thing about like rewatching something like that is if you're like showing it to a friend or something like that. And then, I'm, you know, like those moments, you're just like, you're waiting to see their reaction. You're just like, oh, what do you, what do you think? Yeah. Right. Like, it's, no, it's, yeah. Yeah. Cause it's not like something like Neil Gaiman where you can like appreciate the prose and all the craft right. work oh, yeah. that went into it. It's, it, um, this is James Bond, but 10 years younger. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I feel the same way. Like, I, like, I'll shove some of my favorite books down my friend's throat. I'm like, you guys need to read this and, like, update me. Snapchat me your reactions when you get to this chapter, when you read this line, yeah. when you figure out what happens with so and so. Um, yeah. because I'm like, they're reading it for the first time and I've already read it. So, like, I just need to, it, like, gives me such a serotonin boost just to see them, like, react to stuff. And sometimes, like, they'll, um it it'll um underwhelm me when they don't react the same way as i did when i read yeah, that's, like that's exactly what happens like what do you mean you don't love yeah, yeah. i'm like <laughs> you hate no me? i have a friend that he's reading like shatter me and like i'm like that's like the book that got me into reading and he's like reading through it i'm like did you discover what happened in like chapter 17 <laughs> like at page three and paragraph 17 blah 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 and like, he's like oh yeah i read that it was pretty cool and i'm like well, what do you think about it like what what how, what how did you feel you know and it's like they give me the bare minimum like they give me no reaction i'm like yeah, yeah. But, like, come on come on give me something your, yeah when they do match your injury it feels so good like uh, it does. i recently yeah. read uh the miracle of the namia general store uh, hmm. which oh come my on, and one of my other friends recommended <laughs> our whole group you. got into this and, book <laughs> oh my gosh no i was, love that i need it to yeah, it oh was the gosh. greatest feeling because every, every, every couple of chapters I'd update them and they were like, yeah, so good. I'm like, ah, oh, I love that. No, yeah, I have like, I do a book club. Like, um, it's like through this app called Fable and like we read a book like every single month and some of, some of the books I'm reading with them. So I'm having the reactions with them. And then some of the books I've already read, so I'm like seeing their reactions. And I'm like, and they got to like this page, this chapter and they're like, oh my gosh, and I'm like, oh my gosh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love that. It's such a serotonin boost. Dude, yeah. I um what's it called? I did that with uh I don't know if you've uh seen uh Inside by Bo Burnham, the the Netflix uh, special. Inside? Yeah. I don't think I have. Okay. No. But no, I haven't. I like yeah. so I was gonna watch it one time and then I was like, uh, like I like I had this one friend that really wanted to show it to me and I was like, mm-hmm. his name's Iman. It's it's like spelled the same way, but like Yeah, pronounced it's differently. Pronounced differently. But yeah, so he was like, yeah. You have to watch this and I was like, I was gonna watch it one night and I was like, uh, he probably wants to watch it with me. So I was like and then like he invited me over. We actually like all watched it together and like me me and him and one of our other friends and then I was like, This is so good. So then I showed my brother and his wife when I was over in Chicago with them. And I was like, you guys have to see this. And then I came back and I showed it to Omer too. <laughs> so I was like, Omer, you have to see this. And we watched it over Discord. And it was just like, it's just such a, like, every time I was like, it wasn't it so, like, because literally, like, there's like this, some parts in it when, like, I would just, like, look over to my brother and his wife and be like, oh, like, it's so good, right? And then, <laughs> yeah. You know, and then, like, there were some parts where I just didn't say anything. And, like, we were just, we were just kind of sitting there and, like, feeling the the emotions that we had to feel. Yeah. It was like, it's like it's a spiritual it's like you're going through it together man it's so great no literally i love like especially like if i've um like i'm sitting with like my family or friends and i've already watched the movie or tv show that's like on the screen i'm not even like 
watching it. I'm watching their reactions yeah. to see what happens, you know, um, as they go through it. And I, I love that. Um, like, I was watching Shang-Chi with uh, my friends on Discord, too, like, literally nice. two days ago. <laughs> and I had already watched it, but I was, like, I wasn't um, even really watching the movie when we when I watched it again. Yeah. Um, but they were watching it for the first time and they got to certain parts and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, you guys are going to love this scene. You guys are going to love this scene. And um, the bus no, yeah, scene, yeah. Like the, or the, yeah, the, the scene on the bus for the fight scene. That was no, like, I literally everything. rewatch that all the time. I like to like look up the YouTube clips. I'm like, uh, Shang-Chi, like the, the bus, like, yeah. uh, like fighting scene. And no, it's so good. I loved it. Like the thrill that yeah. I got watching it and even watching it for like the million times again. Yeah. I loved it. it was, yeah, it was I, I just felt so proud of uh, Super Boo because I watched him uh, on Kim's Convenience for years before he got the role. I was like, mm. I was like, this is this is like a proud dad moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like everyone I feels that way with him. He's, he's just so like, and he's very charismatic on like any talk show or anything that he goes on. He's like very relatable. He's really cool. Yeah, no, yeah, I see, like, oh, him on, on TikTok, like, just hyping up the movie and everything, yeah. and I, like, even before, and he, like, he gave it, like, a lot of hype, I'm like, he's so cute, he's so adorable, <laughs> I love him, I love how he's so proud of his movie and everything. Yeah, 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 I feel like he did, he did like, 90% of the marketing for Sean. No, literally, like, it wasn't, and it felt like, I felt, like, so, like, they really did him wrong, like, most of the marketing did come from him and, like, the actors mm. and stuff like that that were actually part of the film, and, like, literally even TikTok in itself, just, like, hyping up the film, because it's, like, such a big, like, movie for, especially, like, the Asian community, and, like, yeah. it's, like, the people that are supposed to be doing the marketing aren't, like, doing it and stuff like that, but, and it, it fell to, like, the like the fandom and the audience and stuff like that and the people that are actually passionate about the movie um that worked like on it um so yeah i yeah like was like i'm glad it has like the traction it does now like it was yeah. a very successful movie and stuff like yeah. that and it was very good i loved shang chi it's like one yeah, of my favorite marvel movies now yeah it's, it's definitely top five i think it has the best fight scenes out of any marvel movie i agree too i think no, it's I, up there with winter soldier so for that winter soldier had some really good um choreographed fights yeah. as well i'd say but oh, yeah, yeah I, I might agree with you that shang chi are always better when they're choreographed yeah like, that's why i didn't that's one of the reasons why i didn't like a lot of black widow because it just it just kept cutting i'm just like what yeah am I yeah. yeah i agree with you i think shang chi is like my favorite with the fight scenes because like it's very it's like very more like a dance and like it's choreographed and yeah. it, it very yeah, it think, flows like, with like all together Mm -hmm. um but like the ones in winter soldier like i have like edits of like just like bucky barnes like and stuff like that just like saved in my tiktok favorites um and I'll, like i'll re-watch him over and over again and like knowing what to expect and i'm like i know the way he, he walks like <laughs> on top of the roof of the car i'm like it's coming it's coming and it gives like i love it it's so good oh man dude yeah it, the the winter soldier like winter soldier was really great and I, I love Marvel. <laughs> I guess it's oh yeah, so me too. I love books and I love Marvel. It's my like two favorite things. My only personality trait. Yeah, those are two solid things. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're also gateways into other stuff because like, uh, my love of books and Marvel. I started reading the Miss Marvel comics. Yeah. Uh, I I love those. They're my favorite comic American yeah. comic ever. Just because, like, a brown Muslim nerdy kid from New Jersey. That's that's what I am. <laughs> yeah so i was like i was like it, it was nice to see uh, see representation like that but then that sort of was a gateway into like books like i the unseen and the bird king because uh g willow wilson uh who created who co-created miss marvel wrote those books and now yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah just, i totally understand that like especially with like the representation part we talk a lot about that on book talk like seeing yourself within the books that you read um and like most of us at least Gen Z people um like kids like in their 20s in college and stuff like that we grew up reading these very like white books um and not even realizing that like like yeah they were fun they were cool and whatever and then like when we'll read books with our representation it's like whoa this is what we were missing out on because you can't really like when you're younger you can't really miss something that's not there that's not presented around you or in front of you yeah. um but then like when it just happens like when i see like muslim like accurate muslim representation within books movies tv shows and they're they're not the terrorists they're not stereotyped and stuff yeah. they just so happen to be muslim or hijabi or whatever it is yeah. it's like oh my gosh this is this is me i can like self my certain self into these characters and see myself through them um mm -hmm. and i love that i love like seeing like own representation within everything um 
Yeah, because really before you said you just like before you had all the bad representation and the old, and then you had like neutral representation where you'd see like a yeah. in the background and you just need the caprio me like hey that's one of us yeah exactly exactly yeah like yeah, every yeah, time yeah. there's like a you know like a hijabi in the background or something me and my whole family would be like oh my god it's one of us you know no, like, yeah and then I, yeah do the same thing no, yeah exactly. they'll have them like in background characters and stuff like that and i'll see like hijabis i've seen it like um in like the new toy story movie there was like like a cartoon hijabi in the background i'm like oh my gosh hello that's me yeah right but like shouldn't it be like the main characters sometimes at least oh true yeah and like like, it's honestly like the bare minimum like it's a bare minimum i'm like oh my gosh that's me but like it it is the bare minimum it should have already been there um it should it should be more it should be the main characters let's not have like these hijabis rip off their hijabs for like a white man you know let's just have them be who they are you know yeah um but yeah um at this point like especially if like you're a minority or something you kind of you appreciate what you get even though it is a bear mom and you know you deserve more like you know you deserve like mm-hmm. to see these characters like um be whoever they are and they just so happen to be muslim they just so happen to be brown and whatever and it's not really because a lot of these times they'll make their like you know um their whatever makes them a minority their personality trait you yeah. know and it's like that's not really what they should be characterized as you know what i mean mm-hmm. Like, come on, tell me at least their favorite color or something. Not, don't tell yeah. me that they have all this oppression. Like, I've already witnessed that. I go through it all the time. Yeah. So, no, yeah, it's like, yeah, we'll give you representation, but will we give you accurate and good representation? Mm, that's where we draw the line. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like, I, I'm tired of seeing the, you know, American soldier rescues of Ghana's. No, I, those movies, no, literally, people <laughs> will like, like hype like, them up and they'll get like Oscars and stuff like that. And I'm like, they're literally killing my people. Hello? Like, like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. that's not what's happening <laughs> yeah it's literally not what's happening it's very inaccurate yeah dude but hey i think we're getting closer right with the I, with yeah. the hijabis in the background we're just slowly inching towards yeah. I and mean, now we have miss marvel and then there's going to be a tv show yeah. so you know maybe uh maybe we'll get that representation but oh yeah it's definitely a slow process but it's it's still happening so i do appreciate like that people like work behind the scenes and stuff like that are actually listening to like the audience and what we want and stuff like that you know yeah, definitely um but we're nearing the end um as we usually do and uh it's been it's been so much so much fun thank you so much again um likewise and, uh before we go we always ask our guests for a p- piece of parting advice um and so we'd ask you honestly for advice on how to grow as an influencer i would i would personally love that advice um but it's anything that you want to talk about um having a passion interest um really anything that you've learned or grown with um throughout your life any advice that you want to put out there no yeah sure yeah like the influencer and stuff like that my it's kind of a, a generic piece of advice but like it's honestly like just like have the motivation to just post like if you post once then even if it doesn't do well, if the video doesn't do good or you're not getting any traction, keep on posting to, um, because I, like for the most part, you should be posting for yourself first and making yourself happy, happy. And if you're not like happy at the content or whatever it is that you're producing, you're not going to be happy yourself. You're not going to be satisfied. Um, so do it for yourself mostly than anybody else. That's like it's, that's kind of it's easier said than done, um, especially like if you're at a point in which like Oh, like whatever you ha- already have this many followers you're one to talk blah 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 but yeah. it honestly is just having one of invasion it's not really just like oh i have to think of this unique video that everybody's gonna like that um it's gonna take me this many hours i'm gonna be so stressful to make it or even if it's not a video podcast or whatever it is um as long as you're satisfied make satisfied making it one or two people will be satisfied watching it or listening to it and that's all that matters just yeah. getting like slowly great uh gaining that audience interaction it's really just like a build up and you just keep on like doing it. it's honestly like a workout if that makes sense um just like motivating yourself to keep on going and yeah you'll see the community you'll build you'll see the followers come back you'll see this and that and before you know it you're at the top of your game and, and everyone's happy well, great advice um thank you so much Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. This was such a fun like chat and chill. I had so much fun. All right. So uh 
thank you so much for, again thank you so much for joining us today and uh, you know uh, be sure to follow uh, I'm in at uh, I'm in books on both Instagram and TikTok and pretty much all social media uh, and as always uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at a cup of coffee pod or email us at a cup of coffee pod at gmail.com if you have any questions concerns or would like to be on the podcast uh, and as always we'll see you next time Thank you.